Welcome back to Vision on TV. We are here in the Bank of Ideas in London in November. We're holding up nice and strongly. We're in the repossessed UBS building. It's absolutely fantastic to be here. And we're speaking today with B from Friends of, of Blair Mountain. Do you want to tell us why that mountain needs you and your colleagues as friends? Uh, well, um, every mountain needs a friend. But um, Blair Mountain, uh, I mean, there's, there's two like reasons specifically to look at Blair Mountain. Uh, the first is that it's the site of the largest labor uprising in American history. Uh, and the second reason is that coal companies at the moment want to blow it up. So um, going back to the first reason, um, in, in 1921, uh, Blair Mountain is located in West Virginia in the United States. Um, in 1921, 10, 15,000 miners, a uh, coalition of black miners, white miners, and immigrant miners all fought together for the right to unionize. And they, um, over five days, they seized arms from company stores, um, hijacked trains, and made their way up towards Blair Mountain because they were trying to get over to the town on the other side called Logan to free their friends who had been uh, put into jail for trying to unionize. And also, for, and also they wanted to um, go through um, the other coal fields and liberate um, the other miners down there. Uh, but there they were met by a gr group of uh, state forces and hired security forces. And uh, so you had this, uh, this battle ensued and uh, a lot of these miners ha were back, had been back just a couple years from fighting in France during World War I. And uh, so they dug trenches and um, it was actually a very sophisticated battle. I mean the battlefield hasn't really been um, analyzed properly, properly, but there are some great um, archaeologists who have been looking at it and you know sort of reassessing it and actually the story the battlefield which needs so much more study is on private land and now there's injunctions on people um, even studying it because the more value that it assumes is a historical site the less likely the coal companies are going to be able to blow it up. Mm. Okay so it, it feels like a deliberate strategy um, to block people gaining more archaeological evidence of this labor history on the site. Is that, has that what your group feels is going on? Um, a lot of people suspect that. I mean, I, I, I'm not completely sure. Um, I think that there's definitely an element to it. I think that it gives them, it doesn't make them any, it doesn't make them sympathetic, that's for sure. Um, uh, it, it's no secret that uh, coal companies continue to hate um, the union. Uh, a lot of the retired union miners that are part of, that work with Friends of Blair Mountain are, um, and, and other uh, coalitions, are, a lot of them believe that mountaintop removal mining was used as a deliberate strategy to kill the union. And so for that reason, a lot of retired underground miners really don't like mountaintop removal mining because what it did is in destroying the union, not only is it, um, destroying the mountains all around them and endangering people's health and lives and actually reducing the jobs that are available because it takes more people to mine underground than on a mountaintop removal site but also because um, because you know so few jobs means less likely to be um, organized and everything uh, it means that as a ripple effect the underground mines that are still operating are also less likely to be unionized, and um, then you have these big these disasters like the Upper Big Branch disaster. I can't remember what was it like twenty nine miners were killed last year. I think it was mm -hmm. April of last year, in an, in an underground explosion in West Virginia, and so that that just sort of reminds us of how important the union still is. I mean, it sounds incredibly destructive as a way of mining, blowing the tops off mountains. How big is the problem in the U.S. at the moment? Well, over 500 mountains have been destroyed by this method in, mm -hmm. in Appalachia. Um, I mean, lo loads of studies have been done. So basically what happens is you, um, the first thing you do, it, it's basically open cast mining, except you remove the mountaintop first. But the first thing you do is you strip all the forest cover. So you remove all the trees and you sell it to lumber companies. Um, uh, and so in doing that, I mean, you're, as I said before, it's, Incredibly biodiverse place, and you know each mountain is extremely special from a biological perspective. Uh, and so, uh, so that's what they do, and then they blast it away, 
And one of the really important things to keep in mind is that what coal does is it filters out all these minerals. And so all these minerals over millions and millions of years are building up inside of these mountains. And so when they blow them up, all these toxic things end up um, you know, in the sky and everything. And then they take the remaining um, earth and they put it into valleys called valley fills. And what that does is, is that covers up natural streams and it causes floods and it also pol pollutes drinking water. And because most people in the, this part of the country drink from well water, um, it's, it, you know, it's, uh, it means that sort of they're, they're, they're in a much worse position in a way. So um, how do you see this issue linking to the Occupy movement? And, and is it also, is it linked to the US Occupy movement? I mean, you're here today in London. Uh, well, I, I actually live here, but okay. um, I think it's linked to it because what, what, what we see, I saw sort of, because I was at a, a reenactment march this summer of the March to Blair Mountain, and what I saw there was really surprising to me was this coalition of so many different people on so many different issues who were starting to understand, who were basic, you know, they, they all had this understanding that the basic, this basic inequality of power that, you know, is the source of all these problems we have. And also, when the really important thing of bringing labor and environment together, and although it may not be so visible in the Occupy movement, a lot of that, that's what a lot of it is about, is that, you know, you have the, the radical environmental global justice movement getting together with the labor movement. And that creates a very powerful combination. And for people who want to join you, how can they find out more information about your group and what you're doing? Um, well, Friends of Blair, I'm sort of work with Friends of Blair Mountain. I mean, I'm not in Friends of Blair Mountain, but um, you can try out friendsofblairmountain.org. I'm doing a talk tomorrow, uh, at this Wednesday, um, 23rd of November, at the Bank of Ideas at 7.30 p.m. Uh, so come along and learn more about it. I mean, another thing you can do is do stuff like what is being done right now, uh, occupying headquarters of banks like UBS, which finance these projects. Um, they've signed uh, agreement, like they've, they've come up with policies saying they're not going to do it anymore, and then they keep doing it. And so, um, you know, I think one of the big things, that London is the center of finance, and so something like mountaintop removal mining, um, you know, what, just go, you know, go after the where, the, you know, got to go after where the money's coming from. But I mean, in terms of it being important to people over here, it's like I think it's really important to bring people over here because um, I get this feeling from having studied in depth sort of some of these minor strikes in, the, in America is that people, the way that people remember it in this country, especially people who weren't alive at the time, and the way it actually was is very different. And I think that this this. The story raises issues about how we remember labor history. Is labor history important? And what does it say about power that, you know, certain parts of our history have been deliberately glossed over? I mean, in West Virginia, it's not even in uh, children's history textbooks. Um, actually, none of the union history is in it at all because the state is propped up by coal, but it is coal, and doesn't want people to know about it. Well, thank you so much. You've been here uh, watching Vision on TV. We are in the Bank of Ideas in London. Uh, come and join us, and let's be the ones there talking about in 100 or 200 years what we're doing to make a difference. Thanks for watching.